Noir 5 and in living color. Okay, I got an elbow. That's not my elbow. Okay. See that I tell you, this is this is what we do. And what we do is have some absolutely amazing, talented, forward thinking people that are are just about about this much crazier than I am because their creativity knows no limit. And that goes for this wonderful actor, creator, director, producer, writer, educator, and entertainment consultant. Right here, here, right here, talking to, talking to, see, I told you I know people. They act like I did. We just fall out the sky. This is Carl Gilliard. Okay, I'm going to pronounce your middle name right. Carl Rousseau Gilliard. Oh, you got it right. Who does that? But you, mother love, nobody. Nobody. They don't roll the Russo. <laughs> they, they, I mean, they don't roll. Yeah. They don't roll. You got to roll. <laughs> you know, you have to. You have to be able to. My sister, my one of my sisters, she had a a a, a guy that she dated was from Africa, and he would when he talked, you know, and he would, and I was like, that is so fast. So you have to roll. Welcome roll. to the program. Roll. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm very happy to be here, Mother Love. Thank it you is for wonderful. Me. And you know who loves us. You know who loves you and I besides God and the Almighty because you know we're his favorites. That's right. Miss Cynthia Busby of Busby Promotions. That's my Cynthia girl. Busby. That's, That's my girl right there. We got some history. Right, right there. Long she, way. she makes sure that we stay connected. And this has been such a, you know, such a wild ride since we last spoke. I mean, we didn't been through COVID-19, people dropping dead like flies, Con conflict is all over the world, and you still find the beauty in the world and continue to create. Indeed. You continue Indeed. to create. So yeah. let's get people caught up on who Carl Gilliard is and how come and how come you do what you do. Okay, let's start with the I got one. Let's start with this one. What was okay. Carl like when you were like 10, 11 years old? What was that young fella like? Uh, uh, I was living in Chicago. Mm -hmm. That was 1969, thereabout. Mm -hmm. 68 was, was the year we lost Dr. King. In fact, I was just talking about that to somebody uh, earlier today. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was a heavy set little boy that loved movies. Mm -hmm. I mean, I loved movies. I would spend hours in the movie theater in Chicago watching the same doggone movie over <laughs> and over again. That's a true story. I would go mm -hmm. like um, Chicago has, you know, L trains and mm -hmm. I would get on the L train and I would ride it from end to end. And then I would get off in downtown Chicago I walk around downtown, going to Marshall Field, going to different stores. You know, SS Kresge, the East Chicago. In the city. Remember SS Kresge. SS Kresge, go in there and buy me some penny candy, and then I would go to the movies and sit there and watch James Bond, Jack Lemmon, Sidney Poitier, you know, Walter Matthau, Peter Sellers. I mean, that was my childhood, and uh, that was enough. And yeah, I go swimming with my, with my little friend, you know, at Abbott Park on 95th and State, uh, 95th and, yeah, State, I think it was, Abbott Park on the south side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, play baseball, you know, us little kids did. The mm -hmm. innocent day, no, you know, TikTok, you know, all we had to do was play with each other and, and run up and down the block and fall and hurt ourselves and get back up again. Mm -hmm. Right down the hill <laughs> on your back with your hands up. That was our right. first roller coaster experience. You get mm -hmm. on a hill and you just pray you don't break anything, tear up anything. Because if you do, mom and dad are going to come after you. Not because your head got a big swole on it because you missed the bump. <laughs> it's because, didn't we tell you don't be riding down that sea? Y'all don't just that. That's why your head got and Mother Love, I would ride my bike. We would have this place. There was a place called the Sand Dunes, which mm -hmm. was really just a construction site. And we would take our bikes and we'd ride up those freaking sand dunes and through the, the trail and we'd fall and flip over our bikes. It was crazy. We were crazy. But that was fun. Yes. That was fun. Absolutely. You know, and you got up and you helped your friend, you know, get, you know, put the sand on the, on the, stop the beat. We couldn't be going in the house bleeding. They can't go what we <laughs> So you love the movies. Oh, what was the was attraction for that? Are you an only child? No, I've got a brother and a sister. Mm -hmm. uh, we're kind of close in age. Uh, mm -hmm. My sister was born like a year and a half after me, and my brother's like maybe two and a half years after me. So we're oh, all so within. You're the older brother. Yeah, we're all. Yeah, I'm the oldest. We're all mm -hmm. within about three and a half years, you know, mm -hmm. top to bottom. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, and you were uh, were you close growing up? 
Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I think we were. I mean, mm. I think my brother and sister are closer than I was to them because mm. I was um I was a very independent kid and my mom would um would let me go. As I mentioned to you, I would just go mm. to the movies and I would just go and she kept a tighter rein on them. So mm. it kind of created somewhat of a of a separation between me and the two of them, but we are, you know, close family. We, you know, love. Yeah, because family. you got to set an example, and she's yeah. like, "Wait a minute, I, I got one independent out of the three of y'all. Uh, uh-uh, <laughs> let me pay attention to them." And, that, right. and that's a good thing. When did you know that this was going to be your passion? When did you realize that I think I can do this? Matter of fact, I know I can do this. I, I, you know, I was fascinated with films going back to even before I was 10, I might've been four or five years old, but I never saw it, I guess, as a reality. I remember one time going to uh, the principal's office in second grade, I was seven or eight years old and I got into trouble. And the principal said to me, "What?" because I was talking to him, I talk out of my way out of the trouble. The principal <laughs> said, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to be a comedian. I was like, hey. <laughs> I said that. A comedian, because I watch, you know, all the TV shows, you know, Red Skelton and uh, and uh, Ed Sullivan and, you know, and, and I would see all these comedians. I love stand up as a young boy, but I love the movies, the entire industry. But I think that when it came down to me really seeing that I could do it because I knew I wanted to do it. But I think the connection with really wanting and thinking that I could do it happened in stages. And the first time was in high school when I saw Cooley High. And uh, I saw Glenn Turman. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, when I saw Glenn, I said, wow, he looks a little like me. And that's where it started. I think that, that was the first part. And then the second part was once I got to Michigan State, I went to college, I'm getting ahead of myself, started doing theater mm-hmm. at, uh, in college. And then that was another step. And then there was another step after that, after that mm-hmm. where I just came to visit LA and decided I was going to come and go for it. That was around 1986 or so. So there were several stages to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You said, that's it. This is what I'm going to do. When you, when you, what was the reaction if, and when you told your family and your friends that this is it going to LA, Uh, we may do the doggone thing. Well, you know, (laughs) yeah, good question. You know, mother love, I, um, I lived in um, Kalamazoo, Michigan, which was the last, um, the last uh, uh, place I lived before I came to LA. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had a job working for Pepsi Cola, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it was a good job, making you know at that time good money. Mm-hmm. And when I sh- shared with my mom that I was going to leave that job and move to California to pursue acting, mm-hmm. she thought that I was a little out of my mind. <laughs> she did. He did. And I said to her mom, I said, Mom, I'm going to California, but I'm going to get a job when I get there. You know, I'm doing sales. What am I doing? I'm going to do it in California. So I'm doing theater, which was my plan at the time. And but by the time I got my first role and it wasn't wasn't even a big role, it was um, like an under five or special business thing on a soap opera. She saw me on there. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, she was on Mm -hmm. board. My mom, it didn't didn't take her much. She, She saw me on that TV show on the soap opera, General Hospital. And she said, I mean, see, and I, and, and, I didn't have lines. It was just like you could you could see me, but it was nothing. And no, it was like, something. I mean, it what was I mean, enough it to was, keep yeah. that fire, it was enough to keep right. that fire burning in you. But it was belt. enough for her to see, I guess, that I'm gonna get behind my son. And, and she's been on board ever since then. And even and you know, somewhere in the back of her mind, she's like, this is my child, and he is just I lost his mind. I got to stay <laughs> close to him. I got to support him in this because, you know, right. I, and I can't, I will not allow anybody to hurt him because I know that Tits in the head. That's what they used to tell me. Mm-hmm. You know, she tits in the head. You, you know, you can't say things around her because she recollect everything. No, I don't. Right. <laughs> no, I don't. Just for that time. And so you, you, you felt like, do you still love comedy? I, you know, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always say that, you know, maybe one day I'll try stand up and I'll go someplace where no one knows me. Maybe I'll go to Anchorage or something. Come like a little that. closer to the mic for me. Maybe I'll maybe I'll go to Anchorage, Alaska or something and, and uh Okay, and, wait, wait, hold up, wait, no, wait, Carl. I just got a question. Okay, 
You from Kalamazoo, Michigan, I might get the connection of the cold, brutal winter that you would want to go to Alaska. But how, do you, <laughs> how does one jump from Los Angeles and stand up comedy? And I think I want to go to Anchorage, Alaska. I don't think anybody well, has ever said that. <laughs> it's not like a joke because I'm afraid to bomb. So if I'm going to bomb, bomb in front of people who don't know me. I know no one in Anchorage, Alaska. That's the whole little, see how that was a bad joke, but. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Well, they're going to know you're not. They're going to know you're not. You have, you have no choice. You cannot bomb. I, you know, I, I think when, when people say that, it's it's that they haven't come into the comfort zone, to, you know, as a, as, a, as a stage performer and as a one-person stage performer, especially doing comedy to make people laugh that you don't know and you don't know what they're going through and yeah. they don't know what you're going through because the best comics come from the greatest pain. I, 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 I have, that's true. In See? fact, I, I'm going to gonna digress a bit. Um, first of all, I have a lot of admiration for stand-ups. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot. And um, and then you just said, talked about the pain. <clears throat> I, I, you know, I'm getting jumping around a little bit, but I did my own series. Mm -hmm. And episode 204 is called I've Got the Funny. And in that episode, I get challenged by a friend to do stand-up. So I have to go around and get advice from people on how to do stand-up. And what <laughs> they talked about was what you just said, which was you got to turn your pain into the funny turn your pain into something that you know makes people laugh just by telling the truth telling your story mm -hmm. for real from your heart and and people who do that successfully are in my mind geniuses and and open geniuses because yeah. some geniuses want to keep it close to the vest and you know you can't know my secret you can't know what it is that i do or oh, if you find out who i am you're you're not gonna like me because you're gonna know that i'm spazzle right. from the zazzle land make it funny i did a whole and, episode about that in my show it, whole and, and that's important when you mm -hmm. when you see because you've been doing this for quite some time and you are just as fresh today as you were the day <laughs> you said I'm going to LA. You better watch out. <laughs> yeah. So God's uh, preserved me, Mother Love. God has preserved me. Now, see, okay, see, I wasn't going to get into that part yet because that's <laughs> a, this is a good time because a lot of people, especially uh, at this time in our lives and what's going on in our country, in the mm -hmm. world, in our families, in our careers, I mean, we, you know, it's like being in an episode of ERNYPD Blue X Files. Mm -hmm. You just just pick one crazy town and we just getting flung from one side to the other. And we're all looking for some sort of balance, some yes. sort of sense of, OK, well, maybe I am crazy, but I'm not crazy mm -hmm. like that. And I know that when we pool our resources together, we can work together. What Indeed. do you see? That we need to do because you've done you and you deal with human emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you see that we can do as a collective? to say, okay, we can get off of this crazy train and we can- Well, you know, <clears throat> nobody asked me, but but since you just did, <laughs> I think <laughs> it's, it, 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 to me, in my mind it's quite simple, mm -hmm. is that we need to take a mirror check, look in the mirror and get a handle on our triggers, okay? And we need to allow people to be who they are which is really what we do as actors is uh, our unique voice and emotional voice is something that only we can bring to the world in, you know, within the context of a script or a story, right? So even in, in our human interaction, we have to stop fighting each other and stop pointing things at someone because they don't agree with us or because uh, we don't look like them or, you know, fill in the blank and give people an opportunity and a freedom to be who they are. And don't allow ourselves to be triggered by media, by the blogosphere, by cable news. I don't care. All of that. Sure. Have your point of view. Be who you are and stand in that. But also give people the freedom to do the same thing. Love each other. Because I always say that, and this kind of goes to your point too, Mother Love. We have much more in common then we have differences. And I don't care what the differences are. What's happening now in our, in our country and in our world 
is that let's say with this 90%, 10%, we're blowing up that 10% when we have the 90% in common. Let's focus on the 90% and let people be who they are. So okay. yeah, no so, one asked me uh, until you did, but you okay. know, that's my answer. Wait, I don't think you got the memo, sir. <laughs> Cynthia did not give you the memo. Uh, Wait, what, don't what? be trying to do logic and make sense on a mother life show before <laughs> yeah, no, no, 8 no, o'clock no, Eastern I'm time. Gonna, See, because that know. people don't get a headache. They don't get a headache. Like, <laughs> what? Did he say it was that simple? Is it that plain? I mean, it I want really, people to accept is, me like I am. So what's wrong with me that I can't accept you and love you or not love you as you are? I want to be treated that way. What? See, so you made you a didn't get the memo, right y'all. Y'all know the memo. You can be doing logic and making. You sense. made a huge said, point right there because it is simple. Because we all want that, mm -hmm. and we need that. Who doesn't want that? And we need it's not, and it's a you want, know? and it is a need. Right. That, that's mm -hmm. one place. You know, they say you know the difference between a want and a need, right? Right. Oh, mm -hmm. This is love and communication and compassion and right. sympathy and empathy for one for first for ourselves. We won't even look. And when you say take that mirror, take the mirror check. So I told you I didn't come up with this. I'm not that clever. Carl probably started that. Okay. Look at the Maybe I didn't. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I'll take credit for it. Okay. Take it. <laughs> for mother love the mirror thing. When And when you do, and when you're honest, when you're honest with yourself, you know, they, they, they say the biggest lie you can tell is the lie you tell yourself. That's and right. You, and that mirror test, that is extremely humbling. Okay. They had to come and get like two, three shovels to pick up my wet chocolate that just like melted completely. You just saw saw toenails and the top of one of my wigs was just it was just a wet, <laughs> it was just ridiculous. It was it, it was just it was insane and right. it was so healing. <laughs> and when you did your mirror test, what did you learn about Carl? And how well, did he change? You know, Mother Love, as you know, the older we get, hopefully, the wiser we become. <laughs> and our wisdom comes from our ability to see ourselves and to mm -hmm. learn from our mistakes and our experiences, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm progressing and getting better every single day. But at this point in my life, I've never felt more um, not just assured, but also know the power of God that lives within me and know who I am, bad and good. And actors who are doing their job embrace even the bad stuff because you need it to work and to be effective, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I love the human voice. I don't have to agree with you. Any, I don't. It's not important to me to agree with you. And I'm very, very uh, passionate about the things I believe in. Mm -hmm. But also, I love to hear other people talk about what they're passionate about. You know. So uh, I, I forgot the question. Did I answer your question? Did I answer her question? What you yes, answer? you did. <laughs> you asked what, well, you gave me you gave me part of that, and I yes. appreciate that. And I was asking how did it change you after you saw your oh, you did your mirror peace, test, peace, peace, and what peace. did you learn about yourself? Well, I learned that I am a bit of a of a strong personality. Mm -hmm. uh, no, nah. but 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 how to also you know channel that properly. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and I think that as I learn more about myself, uh, I, I've got overwhelming peace in my life. Mm -hmm. I have more, it's more, more even keel, mm -hmm. less extreme highs and extreme mm -hmm. lows. I'm kind of like, when I go high, like I'm having a great time in my life right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not like, Ooh, going crazy. You know, that takes a lot of energy <laughs> after a while. You know, I'm good. <laughs> I'm thankful and grateful on a consistent basis. Right. Mm -hmm. But. You know, and if stuff I like, have a bad day, I don't go too low either because I remember I had a good day two days ago, mm -hmm. right? That's one thing about humanity, right? We 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 don't we aren't the same every single day. Sometimes we just wake up on the wrong side of the bed a little bit, but that's nothing that a little meditation and reading of the word can't kind of even mm -hmm. out, right? So anyway, See, and if that's I, what, that's I, what I I'm getting about uh, getting out on the wrong side of the of the bed, I just roll over to the other side. That's what I do. Yeah, roll up. I'm like, mm -mm, mm -mm. I, I love it when I hit the floor, wake up, and I'm like, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I know you got a sense of humor because you keep me going. Hit the floor, and you know that son of a biscuit eater, Satan, be standing up. <laughs> Not the 
<laughs> Dog call it up again. And she's smiling. She's smiling and laughing and loving on people. Oh, I don't know. And, it, and it's, it's really, and it's, it's who you believe. And we, a lot of people think that they are the be all, do all, end all, say all. And then when it's all said and done, they just sitting there going, I ain't know what I was talking about. Oh, God, I'm so bad. I don't have anything to show. Wait, what I was supposed to do? And time goes so it moves at lightning speed. And mm. with the, you know, with the, with the interest, I never would have. Well, no, I don't say I never would have thought it would have been because when. And this was a trip for me looking at scripture. Even Christ said in the New Testament, "You be, will be confounded by your devices." Ooh. Now, who yeah. got devices then, now? Then we just talk. Then we just talk about that earlier. I mean, in a sense, I mean, in terms of, you know, believing, making yourself more important than you are. Of course, you're important. But keep it in context of who's you belong to and your responsibility to serve others, you know, is also a mandate of the Great Commission. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm just, I, so, yeah, you're important. But everybody else is important. What, and you ain't more important than this one over here. And no, just and, because and you think you got a title, or yeah, you know, exactly. you, you Mr. 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 and Mrs. Big up, Uppity Muckety Muck, and you know, yes, and I control this, and I'm the CEO, and I'm a self-made man, and I'm a self-made woman. And I thought only selves that could reproduce by themselves was worms. And so that kind of messed me up on the whole scientific thing. So you can never be a self-made anything unless you are a worm. You need uh, a worm. <laughs> okay, shut up, mother. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, I got an A in biology, I think, one time. So I kind of recollected. You know, I like Jeopardy. I got C's in biology. Games. I keep about, it for the, for the knowledge, you know, in case I get the question right. But we make it too complicated. That's right. And it doesn't have to. Well, see, when you, when you, when you get a little older, you know, if you're, you know, growing up, you learn exactly what you just said. Mm. It's not that complicated. Yep, exactly. And that, we, I'm we, like reading the notes. I'm reading people writing. I'm I'm seeing like notes here. Mm -hmm. I don't have to wait. Away. Yeah, people are writing to us. I'm, I, I'm just oh, because they love you. <laughs> because you you guys you have a great deal to say. And and being in the industry that we are in, you know, as crazy as it could be, I had never would have thought that I would have heard the words "hurry up and wait." <laughs> oh, that's that's the whole industry. That's what it is. Well, what I, you do. You, they didn't give me the Hollywood handbook when they brought me out here. I well, you was know, just, we you know we worked together before, right, Mother Love? You know we worked together. I told, see, and there and that part, Carl. They act like, like I don't I'm know people. I'm then I start them. this conversation with I know you. Tell but them how I, we know you. Do, you. do you know? Do you know the movie? Do you know what it is? Because you shouldn't remember. If you remembered, I'd be very surprised. Okay. I didn't expect you to remember because I was in the movie, but only my voice was in the movie. But a friend of mine wrote and directed the movie, so I was on the set a lot. That's how you and I met. Okay. The name of the movie is called Fair Game. Oh, with Michael Whaley, and we're watching. Hey, that's, my, that's, my, that's my brother. That's my brother right there. <laughs> okay, and tell that's him right. he need to call me and get on this program because I know him and his wife and his kid. They probably grown and got fifteen oh, they are. kids. And, and, they are. and call, and call Auntie Mother Love. They just kick me to the curb. I'm just a step host to them. I, you know, I'm just step and they know I love them. <laughs> and you know, his wife and I, we from the same city and everything. And that's the price. You know, he just. He, he treat me like a step post yesterday. Yes, you know I what? I'll make sure. Poster. Did I'll you send me sure the poster? I made the poster. Of course you did. And and I, I was on that set all the time. Um, I was in it like, you know, remember the, wait a minute. Remember the beginning of the movie, there were these phone calls? I think it was with you, right? I think so, yes. Yeah. So I was one of the phone calls. I my voice. Because <laughs> it was like my psychic hotliners. I yeah, 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 yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> That's what it See, was. I told y'all I was a movie star. People don't think, they think I just fell out the sky. I out just the sky. Showed, and you know, most kids think that adults and their parents are like, we're born grown, that we didn't have a childhood. And mm -hmm. you just have That's to right. appear. <laughs> <laughs> and this, and kids will cut you to the quick. What is your take on the young, the younger generation that's coming up behind us and what they're, what they're doing 
because we left, we, and you continue to leave footprints and put mm-hmm. them down. And I, I believe that I'm putting down footprints as well for someone else to come and say, okay, I get mother love and I am mother love. Mm-hmm. You know, we, if you got a mama, this will used to crack me up. They would say, well, is mother love your real name? Yeah. My mom and daddy took a little infant child. <laughs> yeah. We just done ran out of name. We, we just gonna call this one Mother Love. Okay, yeah, that's what you're gonna be. You a bit. It, it cracks me up. I, I never get tired of it. W- yes. When you're out there, do you have a, because uh, a lot of actors have uh, uh, like a preparation regi- regiment that they go through. Do you mm-hmm. ha- go through a car regiment and getting into your character? And oh, what's that yeah. process for you? Uh, well, you know, I think that for me, it's just um, just consuming the, the material. Let's sort of have mm-hmm. a script and, you know, just, just reading the script over and over again, writing notes, doing a biography oftentimes. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself like a method actor. I don't like, like become another person. Mm-hmm. Um, I find the truth of that character that already lives inside me and I blow it up. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, and I obviously, you know, you, you know, you want to, you, you have objectives in this, in, in every scene you play and you have objectives in the script and the character has a journey it's going through and all of that. So my preparation really um, at this point is just kind of saying the moment, saying truthful, mm-hmm. being open to, receive whatever God downloads inside me to, to bring forth. And then, you know, in the moment you're actually doing the scenes and doing the work, stuff comes to you. So it's like you rehearse it and you prepare, but mm-hmm. you still want to stay open mm-hmm. to what happens in the moment. Because if you're doing it with another person and they give you something, you have to be able to respond in the moment. So mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a preparation thing that for sure you're prepared, mm-hmm. but it's also being open to do whatever happens in that moment. That's what's so lovely about it. That's why we call it kind of play, it's play acting. But it's play acting, but it's act, it's, it's you are actually being, you're not acting, you are being in the moment, in that character, in the context of that script and bringing something to pass. And that's really fun. And that's once, I remember, once I remember the lines. Did it, did it, wait, Carl did it. There you go. Wait, uh, I look what, I like the Joker. <laughs> it didn't go that far. I was <laughs> trying to keep you out. See, there they go. I try to tell them, and then get, you just got to hang your tongue out your face. <laughs> I'm a so, black man. It's what we do. It's what we do, uh, the love. <laughs> I got you. So, so now because you played, you play so many different characters. Do you have a favorite? Character, um, and what have you not played? Character, have you not played that you just would love to do? Oh man, I you know I still haven't played uh, the real super bad guy. I played guys who are highly imperfect, who you know may be involved with criminality. Um, <laughs> But, oh, saying, Paul, you made that sound so pretty. <laughs> the guys that were involved in criminality. Yeah, <laughs> see, how, see how actors could just make it just sound beautiful. You're just a I, beautiful you know, criminal. You know, you could go to jail for what you're doing. But criminal, you know, that's I, you know, I've, I've had a wide variety of characters that I've played. I, I, I think mm-hmm. that what I'm most, most proud of is that I've been able to do comedy mm-hmm. and do it, I think, pretty effectively. Mm-hmm. And also do heavy drama. Both sides, and that 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 I'm very proud of that, and I hope to do more of that. But I think that I think if I were to have the role that I like to play, mm-hmm. I guess it's the la- the one that I'm doing now on the family business. Uh, play uh, oh. uh, brother minister. So that's a really cool. Okay, character. I'm glad you brought it up. I didn't want to seem like a groupie and a crazy person, but that is my new that is my new favorite um, guilty pleasure. Oh my. <laughs> God, LC. Oh my God. LC, and the kids Orlando yeah. and London and Paris and Brother <laughs> Minister. Oh, and, and that's a pretty cutthroat. Uh, you know, don't let Brother Minister fool you. He is a <laughs> scheming, conniving, and you do it so <laughs> very, very well. Miguel Nunez. Oh my, uh, what, what's his name? Harris. 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 He just acting a plum fool. And I don't know why he want to go up against the Duncans. What is wrong with this man? 
man. What? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I just, Hilarious. It's, it's, it's a little show I just happen to like. And um, everybody look real good and, and they dress real nice and they're real dangerous. <laughs> the fun to work on. You really. I, I, the, y'all, y'all <laughs> on, I'm telling you, and I I watch these shows. One of my favorite genres of movies are gangster movies, and I like mm-hmm. procedures, and you know, you know, the cop and robber and all of that. The Duncans, I, I, I you know, and we done seen we done seen some bad ones. You know, American mm-hmm. Gangsters. What a month. <laughs> I love that movie too. I love that movie. <laughs> Oh, my, fa- my favorite. This is my favorite scene. <laughs> and I just, I feel so honored and humbled to say, I met Denzel Washington. Like, what do you mean, man? Personal, like this, like right here. And he hugged me and he had <laughs> dirt all over him. He was uh, coaching his son's little league baseball game. I said, I don't care what you got. If you don't come over and hug me for all the chicks, they will never get this close to you. <laughs> and your wife, oh, let her, she liked me. He put dirt. And I, I was a happy camper. And, oh, and, and, oh. and to be able to see, and, 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 and uh, uh, Ruby D, Ruby D. She, I, love her. She I met her too, though. I cowboy too. crap out of him. I don't care oh. what you do. I don't care who you think you are. You ain't going to pat out. And that one slap. <laughs> and she, she, you know, she, she won but this many tall you know, guys. She, mm-hmm. You know what? I felt that sting every time I watched that movie. I was like, you, you, don't, you don't play with your mother. You don't play with your mother love like that. That, that was movie one of has a lot of great scenes in it. I, I like when the, the Duncans like came out with the family business. Oh yeah, yeah. What is it yeah. like working on that show with all it those is. absolutely it everyone is. y'all are talented? So much fun, and it's fun because it's such a juicy show with all these different twists and turns in it. And what makes it so much fun to work on the people. Mm-hmm. When I say that, and this is not an exaggeration. The cast, the crew, the producers, everybody is so nice. It's like really a family. You can tell. So, oh, it's it's, it's like really tell. a family. So that part, I mean, everybody's like, you know, I came away from this show with several new personal friends. You know, Miguel's now a personal friend. Um, uh, Ernie is my big brother who's <laughs> done whether he likes it or not, you know. Uh, and... <laughs> Darren, Ring, Darren Sean Ringgold, um, you know, we've, we've all become like this family. Valerie Pettiford, I mean, oh, everybody, God. you know, everybody, I could just go on and on, which is, and you even go to do the makeup and the hair, and everybody is just Fierce. wonderful. I mean, and I, the I'm prettiest people Sean. you ever see, everybody's pretty on this show. Every, everybody, everybody, beautiful. Everybody even people even like, with a gun. Behind, behind the scenes. Everybody pretty on the show. It's just, just a wonderful place. I, it's a blessing to work on that show. Okay, and you know what? And I'm 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 just gonna say this because you own the program. You know these people and the producers and all mm-hmm. the wonderful people and Valerie Pettiford, all who does not don't need to give me stuff. Who does not get her due no, in this right. business? She's incredible. She is a brilliant mm-hmm. actor. Ernie sure. Hudson is mm-hmm. a brilliant actor you are a i mean you are brilliant it's not just like you know oh yeah they're beautiful people you can <laughs> see the camaraderie you can see the family you can see i mean i, I was kind of upset when they kicked terrace out but then i kind of wasn't upset when they kicked terrace out you know because he deserved to be kicked out you know and that's you mean, you mean, know, oh, and hey, like oh, real yeah. life that's a friend of mine miguel and i are friends oh, yes, yes, but, great guy. and y'all see this one i know that you guys are doing a great job especially if it's people that i know and i can get completely out of that space mm-hmm. and i'm completely out of that space and to be able to see y'all open i'm tell if anybody looking i don't be plugging a whole lot of stuff yes i do <laughs> i shamelessly like everything that my friends do yes i do <laughs> the family business oh and please tell them for me and then we'll continue with our you know regular we'll continue with our regular programming after mother love gets unstuck off of the duncans <laughs> so they can act like they won't have a season five six seven eight nine ten but i can tell you that, that, i can tell you there will be a season five I know I can tell you that. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 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 I can tell you that. That that's that's not a secret. I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. So then that means there'll be a season six because there are I just I, I these so. 
Every one of you are so distinct and so fluid with each other. There's no way they can't. I mean, you, I mean, I'm not, I, and listen, I, I just want to know, I got to say, y'all hair and makeup people are awesome because yeah. we all have yeah. a different color hair, like it grew it out of his head on every every <laughs> scene. You know, I'm like, you know what? And for those of you who don't know, y'all got to watch it. Uh, the Duncans named all of their kids after the city state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How cool is that? And London, I caught on to that the first episode. Other London, people didn't know. Other now? people didn't know. Other mm -hmm. people didn't know. Okay, you didn't. Know? So, so, so it, it is real. I'm glad to know that there's going to be a season five. Now back to the regular programming, ladies and gentlemen. On the line with me and in your face, with his face in the place in the building, is Mr. Carl Gilliard. He is an actor, producer, director, writer, educator, and entertainment consulting. Now, tell me about your your work in, as an educator. Um. Well. Uh, you mentioned Bill Duke earlier, right? And so Bill is one of my best friends, and he tapped me to help him uh, create and run his uh, youth media boot camp. So I helped him, and I created a, a curriculum, and we were in, in L.A. I'm in Atlanta now, but mm -hmm. um, we we did this program at the L.A. Film Academy, mm -hmm. and we also did it in downtown uh, downtown L.A., we bring like 14 or 15 high school kids in and we would teach them media and financial literacy. Mm -hmm. so, so, and I created that program with him and ran it for a few years. So that's so that part. Is it, is it still, is it still running? Because uh, that is as critical. of now, it is not. No. Um, but it may, it should probably come back. As of now, it is not. I mean, I think COVID was a big disruptor. <laughs> For that, yeah. a big that you so, think COVID was it, a big disruptor. Big, Talk mm -hmm. to the million people plus that died from that, and everybody mm -hmm. just you know. And one of our people in my family had come down with COVID. Some of them, you know, it, it, it wasn't really bad, but some of them it was really, really bad and it was touch mm -hmm. and go. So, I yeah. and I don't know anybody that I know that was not touched by this pandemic, right. and I and I. I, but I and I not but and I knew we would get through it. You know that was our three hundred and twelve pandemic that we have gone through in America. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. obviously we got something going on with the hormones and the you know and the genes and you know that the immune system and what yeah. have. You. Yeah. 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 So th there's a lot to to go on and to discern when when you see the I was asking you this earlier. Uh, when you see the young people who are coming up in the industry and it's moving so fast and it's changing, how do you make sure that you guys uh, are up with the technology and, and because it moves so fast? And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I mean, I they got me on streaming services. I didn't know what it was at first, mm -hmm. you know, like a while ago. And now I'm on TikTok. I'm on iHeartRadio, Restream, X, Facebook, The Notebook, Restream, Google, <laughs> Google, Toggle. Dick Jane and Baby Sally, <laughs> and all of them, and, and the podcaster and the drug addict. Oh, no, it's not. Oh no, it's not the drug addict. Podcast no, addict. I'm podcast like, addict. Really? And, and they want to know everything you do. How do you manage the the influx of information that comes in through the internet? I, you know, I only take what I can consume and learn about. <laughs> yeah, when it's I can. Too um, but I, you know, I do teach uh, an acting class here mm -hmm. in um, Atlanta, and I'm sorry, you, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Teach what kind I, of class? I teach, I teach an acting class here in okay. Atlanta, okay. and so it's not just the craft and scene mm -hmm. study and stuff like that. We talk a lot about the business, and I bring guests in who talk to the actors about their experience and how they got mm -hmm. to be where they are, and we have a talk and we discuss, mm -hmm. you know, technology and we we talk about the ever evolving uh, industry, technologically speaking, as well as all the various distribution platforms and a way to tell stories these days and all that. And I think one of the big changes today is you don't have to wait for NBC to call you or anybody like that. You can get to work right now and create your own audience and, and do what you do, like what you're doing. You can do that now. That is, the big difference, you know, back when I started, of course, you you know, everything was filmed. There was no digital, no one, you didn't have no phones. Um, and you were beholding to the powers that be 
to, to let you in, you can now create your own lane. And uh, that's the big change. And yeah. that is what is so exciting. It's exciting mm. and it's frightening. I mean, I, yeah. I know a lot of, I know people that are on the producerial side in the studios and they're shaking in their boots because they realize that all of the power that they wanted, that they had over the industry, over the actors and, you know, everybody that was in the industry and they, they have the power to green light a project right. to say whether or not you get this part, you know, you get paid for this and now, Okay, I could go there and see, and it comes out of, it comes out of, it, for me, it came out of frustration. It really mm. did. I was like, well, I'm, you know, and God will give you what God knows you can handle. I don't oh, care, please. especially yeah. if it look like it's supernatural, especially if it look like it's like so big and giant, you know, I, and don't question. I, I mean, I was stupid and I quit. Well, why would you give me all this? But oh, you know what? And the queen of snappy comebacks had no snappy comeback. I said, well, why would you do this? And, well, why not you? That's right. Okay, see, uh, he needs your help. That's, that was bad. Why not you? <laughs> why not you? And I, why not you? Why not Carl? Why not Carl? Do you, yeah. do you find a new purpose in all that you do? And, and where do you see, okay, because we could live to be 412 years old, you know, mm -hmm. in digital years. Mm -hmm. I just made that up. I like it. We're going to run years. 412. You're 412 in digital world. Hey, if a dog can live for nine, what, seven years in one year, why can't I? I, mm -hmm. I want to live on basketball and football time, too. Time <laughs> out. Okay, come back into the game, and you only get an hour a day that can last for three days. Now, do you like sports? Are you into sports? Um, I'm I'm not a sports sports deep deep de devotee mm -hmm. uh, or a maniac or mm -hmm. fanatic, I should say. Uh, but I no, do... you were right. You were right. You said maniac. no, but I like sports. I mean, I grew up on baseball in mm -hmm. Chicago, mm -hmm. and I still like right, right now. I can't watch the can't wait to watch the Lions tomorrow. Is it Sunday? Mm -hmm. Whatever day they play. Um, but so the playoffs and all the sports really mm -hmm. turned me on. But I don't, when I was a little boy, I followed, aside from movies, I followed baseball and, and basketball like mm -hmm. a fanatic. You know, mm -hmm. baseball cards on my wall. I knew every player in the league growing up. You know, I haven't really followed any sport like that for many years now. But mm -hmm. I do enjoy watching mainly the NFL, mainly the NFL, and also college football, too, mm -hmm. and college basketball as well. I mean, mm -hmm. so I do watch, but I'm not. I'm not a fanatic. Right. You don't have to be attached to one side or the other. No, I, I just watch the game and, you know, I move so much now that I don't know who my teams are anymore. <laughs> Although I am, I am pulling for the Lions because I, I lived in Detroit for a while. So, okay. you know. I, I am pulling for the Lions, for sure. I, I'm, I'm pulling for them, too. You know, the Browns got knocked out. I'm from Cleveland. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> moving fun. on. Okay, I had nothing else to say. I couldn't even talk to my son about it. He and his father, he and my husband, his dad, they were like, I, 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 Mama, I just can't. I can't even talk about it. I just can't. I mean, he was, he was just. And you we've been Cleveland? living in California for the, the majority of his are life. You from Cle are you from Cleveland? Cleveland, Ohio. I told you, Michael Whaley, his, him and his, well, his wife is from Cleveland. Yes, um, yes, I know, yes, him. Yes, I know yes, their yes. kids. Mm -hmm. yep. I met his mama, and she oh, liked me. me. Oh, my God. I love his mom. And aren't they beautiful? Mm -hmm, they, they are. are. Beautiful. I, I call them the Black Kennedys. <laughs> the Black Kennedys. <laughs> <laughs> and they are beautiful, you know. Yeah. And people would think I was crazy when I would say, um, uh, 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 "The forty-fourth president, Barack Hussein Obama, two-term president, is beautiful wife, Michelle Obama." Uh, I always said that they 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 knew who the Whaley's were because the mm -hmm. Whaley's were before them, and they that's took funny. they took several pages out of the Whaley's book. Yeah, you know, that's Michael Whaley. Well, why? Yes, I know you. I know you. <laughs> He treat me like a step host, but he knows I love ah, step host. <laughs> yeah, step host. He treat me like a step host, step sister, step neighbor, you know, step neighborette. They just, you know, I got people to come to my house and they'll take stuff like, oh, that's nice. I like that. And they take it over to their house. Like, 
They don't tell me that they take <laughs> it out of my house. Isn't that called stealing? And so I go over to the house and they don't, they don't even try to hide it. And I go, oh, I got an aqua brush just like that. Oh yeah, I got this one from your house. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't figure out why my forks kept disappearing. Because uh, people that know me, uh, they know that I'm a collector and I collect, I'm in a salt and pepper shaker mode now. So I got salt and pepper shakers from all over the world and from people right. out of the kitchen, from my girlfriends who passed away, who, you know, sent me salt and pepper shakers. And I kept, and they sent me forks and, you know, special forks and whatever. Right. So my fork, you know, I kept saying, and I know I had 16 forks. Over here, right here. Now, how come we only got eight left? And then uh, the house and this and this. Oh, and, uh, and my son. Oh my God, he is so good at that. He told me, "You and my daddy don't need all this. You know that's why I got all these kids. They come into our house like, like, uh, like a shade mother loves general store. Uh, shade mom and pop's general store. We had a pantry." And you, I'm, I'm from the projects in Cleveland, and you know, I did not lack a lot. My mother had a pantry, so I, there was no reason for me not to have it. They would come in, oh, they they could smell a royalty check coming. You know, you got relatives that could smell your royalty check coming. Do I smell it? Smell the, your, I yeah, smell relatives it, that I see, smell. But I, uh, I show see them when they hit my account. I feel good about it. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute, what did you say? What did you just say? When they, when, they, when they hit my bank account, I feel good about it. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I, and that I, w I wish mine would hit my bank account because our son can smell royalty checks coming. It's like track, uh, Mama, where you was on so on. So you should have some royalty checks coming, and it's like a like a twelfth cent or something cracks me up. That's uh, all. And you know, what, what are you gonna do? Kids are useless after a certain point in your life. I'm just telling you. You know, teenagers make you understand why some species eat their young. Uh -huh. Cause remember when you were a teenager, were you a problem teenager, girl? Um, oh, you take it too long. You, to you, you, no, no, no. You should ask my mother because I, I don't think I was, but um, I had some issues. I had some issues as a young kid, like when mm -hmm. I was five years old. Don't don't judge me. I started a fire. The neighbor's garage. I set it on fire. Carl, because at five years old, you thought. I was playing with matches. And said they drew. Did your mother know this? Did they find out? Of course out they did. Oh. They, my, my mom and my dad knew about it. And when I remember, <laughs> this is going to sound like it's abusive, but I mean, I was five. This is what we did mm -hmm. back then. My dad whipped me so bad and he put me in the closet. Yeah, that was, that I was don't think I was in it long, but I mean, I was, I was in the closet. I mean, it was but, like maybe uh, maybe a half hour. I don't know, 20 minutes. It was like he kept me there all night. But I mean, he threw me in the closet. <laughs> wait, 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 I remember wait, that. Wait, wait, you got put in the closet after the whipping? After the whipping, yeah. See, uh, you, not, not that was good. <laughs> and see, back back then, we, when you were getting that, would, when you got to adulthood, would you have ever thought that that was child abuse? Uh, well... Uh, Some of it was. I mean, according to today's well, thing. Well, I, I don't look. You know, I, I, you know, I'm not going to be politically incorrect. I just say this. You know, when I did something wrong, you know, my parents took care of me. You know, with my little butt, and I turned out just fine. Mm -hmm. I'll say and it you, that way. And you didn't do it again. You might have did something oh, else. I just start. I did not start. That. that was the last garage on fire. No. Yeah, that was the last garage. <laughs> you, you learned from it. You and. And yeah. then, and then, you know, when we were growing up, they had just started the uh, child abuse hotline. And we had to be teenagers, you know, well into, and, and our mother would say, I used to tell her all the time, I'm calling 696 kids on you, but you you just treat me so bad. She said, here, here, call them, call them, please call them, please call them, call them right now and let them know they're not just coming to get you. Y'all come as a group. They come get you, they got to come get your brothers and sisters. So now my brothers and sisters say to me, why can't you just shut up? Why you got to be telling mom you go, we don't want to go to the phone. To the <laughs> That was enough. That I mean, the, the psychological effects that your parents could have on you. Did they ever said? Did you remember ever getting set up for a whooping? 
And you know, no, I, I just, I just think, you know, what I thought about when we were just having this discussion is that, you know, today fear is played as a negative, but you see, reverential fear is productive mm-hmm. and grows character and teaches you respect. And so I had a fear of my parents, but it was reverential fear because I love my parents, but I reverenced them. And I believed them and I knew that they wanted the best for me. So, you know, even though he threw me in the closet, I knew what I did. (laughs) You know, and 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 I didn't feel abused. I mean, I knew what I did. Mm -hmm. And I even made me think about it. You know, I look back on it and I think that he might have done that, put me in the closet for me to sit there and think about it for a little while. And that's exactly what I did. Cynthia, Buzz be throwing out a, a, a question. I'm saying, what advice would you give to a more seasoned person who would like to get involved with entertainment? Do you suggest keeping your day job along with your search? Oh, that's a good question. In front of the camera, behind the camera, should they learn skills and for I the whole production, I see whole production uh-huh. theater and film? Um, can I answer that? Yeah, no, you can. Uh, yeah, of course you can. This is uh, the whole well, point. Well, well, Cynthia, that's exactly what I did. What you're, what you're describing there. I think for a seasoned person who's a little older, like my age, whew, well, um, I think that you gotta eat. So I think that while you eat, so a job feeds you, mm-hmm. you can do theater. And you say, you asked, do they learn the skills for the whole production? I think that, yeah, that's productive to know, to know all the skills, but you learn that by doing what you're doing. So maybe you do one thing as a play, uh, as a play, as an actor, maybe you go back and stage manage and that's great. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and whatever you're doing, you're always paying attention to what's going on in the, in the other jobs. Mm-hmm. That's how I learned it. And I think that that's still relevant today. I hope it I is. I, one yeah. of the things when I, uh, when I got completely immersed in this industry, um, I wanted to learn what everybody did. I wanted to know mm-hmm. what the, producers did. I wanted to learn what the gaffers did. I wanted to learn uh, what Foley meant. I wanted to learn all of those because it's a, it's a, it's a, 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 a production of people don't really know how many people it takes to put together a production, mm-hmm. a movie, a television show, how many moving right. parts it is. And there are a lot of moving parts. And to get all those personalities to mesh together and create a, a, a project that other people will want to come and see, will want right. to pay to come and see. That is, I mean, to me, I mean, that that's like so awesome. You know, yep. that's like, uh, that. And I know that's the feeling that, like, I I, I get that feeling like when I, I fix a meal for people and they come over and you, fix, you, you, cook, family, you cook, they come over and they eat and they sit down, you know, to sit there and watch somebody eat what you prepare and enjoy it, to watch somebody enjoy what you've done put your, your, with your craft. I mean, that's like a, uh, that's kind of like a high on a whole nother level. You know, that's a, how did, when, when you come off and you know, and you know, and you know, Carl, that was it. I was on point. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. And I'm crazy like that. Because when I, how, so how, what, what are you asking me? Are you asking me, you know, come I'm off asking stage you, say it again. I'm sorry. When I come off stage or what do you, you yeah, when you come stage? off and when you come off stage, you've done your thing, you know, you did a great job and you come off. How do you, how do you process that? And then decompress to get ready for the next step. Um, for me, when I decompress, it's always around gospel music. E- either gospel music, and I also have um, these other playlists. It's uh, it's kind of soothing music, like uh, orchestral piano stuff. Mm-hmm. And But I love gospel music to decompress. It's like mm-hmm. my favorite. But then other music also is good. So mm-hmm. that's the way that I do it, especially when I'm playing something that is uh, a less than desirable character. Somebody <laughs> who's not, you know, I need to snap out of it i'm gonna take it home with me you know that that, and that that's something else because we and you talked you mentioned this earlier in our conversation when you were saying that you're not a method actor you you know you get into the character you know but you don't change and turn into somebody else other than who you are playing Mm -hmm. a role and Mm -hmm. That, is, that, is that a good coping mechanism for other people to maybe mirror so that they don't take it home? Because some of these roles can be so 
I mean, just drain, a, a draining after. And you know, you come off the set, you'd be like, oh my God. Well, what you said, but you know what? You should, you should feel that way when you come off this from mm -hmm. really working. When I, even, even when I teach class, that's how I am when I'm done because I empty mm -hmm. so much of myself into the, to the actors of class. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you should feel that way, even, even though, you know, I'm not bashing method acting, by the way. I'm just asking, mm -hmm. you know, every, every, everybody, has to determine what uh, method or what style is best for them, mm -hmm. you know? And even when you do what I do, if you sh you pretty much empty yourself out, you don't feel the same when you're done. You gotta go and recharge and bring yourself back, mm -hmm. you know? Because you may be calling up stuff in, within yourself that you kind of want to shake off. Mm -hmm. And, and and that'll do it. And especially yeah, when, yeah. You're, when you're when you're in a play and you're doing this repetitively, day mm -hmm. after day after day, and you make it fresh every day because you don't know who that audience is. And you know, I, and I love live theater. I love it. I, yeah, I, too. I I am just fascinated with it. I mean, with everything, the sets, the the everything. You know, the actors. It's mm -hmm. just so moving. And when you could take somebody in an audience and pull them into your story mm -hmm. and have them, so, I mean, like sitting on the edge of yes. my seat and I'm just watching something new. And and one of the things I didn't think that I would want to do, but I love it, go and see a play more than once. Mm. Yes. You know, when because you, you get something different. And if yes, you, you go do. with different people, I, I, I've probably seen The Lion King on stage at least two or three times right, with different right. people different experience every time. Mm -hmm. and, yep. would, and I went with I, uh, my grandson, uh, uh, our oldest grandson went with us, uh, one, one cause he's in, he's into the entertainment industry. He's in theater. I, I, I take full and absolute credit for everything this young man can do, sing, and I can't carry mm -hmm. a tune and a push, <laughs> but I'm taking that one. And he, he, he got, he got big. You know, mm -hmm. and you just never know who's watching you. Never know. You know who's right. watching you. In, in your in your travels, in your career, have people come to you and said to you, I was watching you? Like the, like the young people that come and sign up for your class. Do they tell you that they've been watching you? Um, I, I don't know. It, I'm getting a lot of that now mm -hmm. um, with the family business, mm -hmm. es especially um, since it hit Netflix. But, you know, there's various things that I don't know is people will walk up to me and they say that I look familiar. I get that a lot. You look mm -hmm. familiar. Do I know you? You look like my uncle. That. You, I could I put you on my uncle. I could put you on my mother's brother side by side. <laughs> and they will say, oh, yeah, both of them, your uncle. I, yes. And my nieces, y'all watching him. Look at him. Don't he look like uncle? So he look, they don't, they don't, oh, he look just like uncle. He wear glasses. Y'all got the same smile. Papa was a ruler. Shut up. I'm just Everybody has a doppelganger. You do, you really favor one of them. I could take you home and palm you off as a relative. They won't know. They won't know. They won't they know. Won't know. When, no, when, when you were growing up, because we used to do some like pranky crazy stuff. What is the craziest oh prank? <laughs> See, I, did I get that? Did I was so bad. I mean, and I was I was such a jokester. Um, I mean, I would call people on the phone, try to sell them things. Like one 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 of the one of the things I did was I was a little boy. I would call people on the phone and sell them something that was called Booty Boppers Manual. <laughs> Booty Boppers Manual. Booty Boppers Manual. Booty Bop. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Booty Boppers. And Booty Boppers manual was a manual that had all kinds of different turds from around the world. A uh, different yeah, what? Turds from Persia, turds from China, turds, doo doo. Will you? <laughs> uh, you know, I, 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 I thought I heard him say that. Doo doo. How do you poop around? Doo doo. Okay. But I isn't mean, it all know, the same? Boy, in the US? About doo doo. Doo doo. Is it, doo -doo. Isn't it all? And did you sell any of them? Did they actually? No, I, I'd them? hang up. I'd hang up, you know, I'd hang up. See, <laughs> now, was that out of your sick, twisted young mind that you did that? 
yeah, it was, I was a little boy. I was, you know, when you're a little boy, you know, doo-doo is fascinating, you know, doo-doo and pass the gas. <laughs> when you're a little boy, <laughs> please. <laughs> when, listen, there's nothing more TMI than one of your male relatives coming to you like this is a normal thing. Come, look at it, toward it. Look at it. <laughs> You know, I was traumatized by that. I was really traumatized. I was That's like, what we did. You, and, and boy, and you, and you, and, and when you're a young boy, I don't know what it is, but young guys, you know, when you, I guess, when you're going from, you know, from a kid, you know, to an adolescent to a teenager, something somewhere in that line in those years, uh, young fellas don't smell themselves, and you, I mean, y'all wake up and you smell like a bowl of yakame. Could put on clothes that you put on jeans that you'd have had on for two weeks. You take them off, they stand up by themselves, and because you, I mean, <laughs> just, and you don't smell yourself, and only. Time your, your mother could tell, baby. Now you need to go in there and put some baking soda under your arm because you know you're starting to hum. You know, you just got to do something about that 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 foot fungus because your feet stink. <laughs> Goes in one ear and out the other. Soon as some chick, some girl come up to him, oh hey, Carl, hi, oh, and you go. That's when y'all get in the hygiene. You gotta wait till some other chick come and tell you, <laughs> see, oh, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> and I found this to be the case. Uh, this wasn't just with heterosexual boys. This was with gay boys too. And you know, we all, everybody has whatever kind of connotation they have of them. Mm -hmm. They get, I'm like, I don't care what you do. You're still funky and you need to go wash your behind. Is that, that mm -mm, you can't cut, the fungus can't be a monk. <laughs> so have you ever been in love? Uh -huh. Of course. I, I have a wife right now. I'm very much uh -huh. in love with. Okay. How long you been married? Nine years. Oh, that's oh, that's still fresh. Well, uh, how long have you known each other? Uh, ten years. Mother love, I've 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 been married three times. And she still love you anyway. Three times. So maybe this you think my, you will get this, it right this time. This is my third marriage. The, and have you gotten better from the first one? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, what if, um, you know, I, I, I got two husbands, but it's the same guy, so kind of really don't. <laughs> no, you know. I was married, uh, I was married the first time, it was uh, 14 years. Then the oh, second time, it was 11 years. So these are not fly by, you know, like, you know, May, December wedding uh, marriages. You were uh, in it. Yeah. How have you grown through each of them? Because a lot of guys are, you know, will get to where you are and say, I'm just not going to do it again. So you, you know, you enjoy being in it, love. It's funny. It's funny you should say that because on my Facebook page, I just put a post up about that yesterday. Did because you? you're right about men. Yeah. Yeah. And I won't get into that because it's, it's kind of deep. But I may do like a live on my uh, on my IG about it maybe later on tonight. I feel like talking. But okay. uh, yeah, but, but, you're, but you're right. You know, men... You know, we just don't, I don't know what it is. I I do enjoy um, being in a relationship like mm -hmm. in, like marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I'm in my 60s and I I, I didn't want to- I mean, oh, darn, you look great. I mean, <laughs> Thank you. I'm, 60, I'm, I'm, I'm 65. So I, I don't- Listen, I and wanna, look, at that, look at that mocha complexion. I'm talking about, see, <laughs> I tell y'all, this what we do. I mean, I didn't want to. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to go. You know, I was able to see into the future because, like, mm -hmm. the second divorce, I didn't want. Mm -hmm. So something in my mind said, you know, it was it was traumatic. I I admit, but I said to myself, I will not be robbed of what God is calling me to be in my life as a husband. That part mm -hmm. of my life, mm -hmm. and God just did something. He just really did it, uh, an accelerated thing with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, here I am. And that's, that's nine years ago. So we've been married. And I only knew her for about a year before I married her. And you knew and, you wanted to marry her? Yeah. And then, um, and then my divorce from the second wife was only final for like 13 months. It was very quick. Wow. Mm -hmm. After you said you were with your second wife 11 years? Mm-hmm. I mean, this you're talking about decade, a decade or more of mm -hmm. the time. Uh, that you were married to these other two women, but not with, and not but, and with her, you said you've grown. How have you grown, and what makes 
this one so special and this one so different. Well, this is the full circle circle part of the, the conversation because I just learned more about myself. Mm -hmm. I think that was the biggest point. I think that that and you would know this being married yourself for a long time, mm -hmm. that marriage, you are forced to look at who you are, you know, and when you look at who you are, you learn certain things. And I think the biggest difference, my wife, that, I, that my wife, her name is Latanya. She is Hi, Latanya. She's she, she's she might be watching downstairs. She says she's watching. I don't know what she's doing. But um, but you know, she understands what I'm doing with my life. Mm -hmm. And I think that as a man, I know this is old fashioned, okay, sue me, and, you know, I was born when you know Eisenhower. <laughs> um, but I think it's important for men to marry women who are aligned and lockstep with their purpose. And that is the biggest thing that I learned in that department of choosing a wife was that. To be, um, you're not supposed to be more, 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 more. I was, I'm a lot more confident in myself, a lot more mm -hmm. assured of what I'm doing. And it's not even aligned with money at all. It's just, it's more aligned with purpose mm -hmm. and who I am as a man mm -hmm. in my heart. Mm -hmm. So when I saw how tied in that she was and in, in that, and we were already getting along and I loved her. She was beautiful and all that stuff, which is, that's great. But on top of that, she was so tied in and excited about what I'm doing with my life. Mm -hmm. Help me, purpose partner, you see. I said, I can't leave her on the, on the market. You know, I, I can't leave her. <laughs> I mean, I had other opportunities. I mean, I had other, you know, I'm just saying that I couldn't leave her because, she, and, and she wasn't, even, she didn't know what she was doing. She was just doing it. Yeah. And, and so. making all those changes, just being herself. How did you meet? We met at a Kwanzaa party. <laughs> a, Kwan, a Kwanzaa party I almost didn't go to because I was the tired. Some, but something made you get up and go. Yeah, was yeah, she already I, there? Yeah, I get there. She was already there. Okay. Um, and I went there with a date. I had a date. So I get there, have a date. <laughs> I was dating this other girl. Really nice young lady. She was really nice. She was. Mm -hmm. And Latanya walks up to me and she says, hi, I'm Latanya Black. I'm your Facebook friend. And so we were connecting on Facebook. And she mm -hmm. recognized me from across the room. Mm -hmm. And I was with this other young lady. I introduced her and I said, hello. And I noticed that oh, she got some nice legs. I noticed that. And I also noticed that she was a beautiful brown babe. <laughs> I like brown babes. You like and brown babes. So, <laughs> and so when she walked away, I said, oh, she got nice legs. I just made a mar marker in my mind. <clears throat> and then I went home that night and I looked her up on Facebook enough we were connected. <clears throat> and I made a mental order for her so that if I saw her again, I would know who she was. <clears throat> And then uh, some months later, a month or two later, um, the young lady that I was seeing, we like really just suddenly broke up. There was nothing really that was wrong. Mm -hmm. we, we just broke up. I mm -hmm. went home that night, mm -hmm. got on Facebook, and Latanya's little green light was on, and I started talking mm -hmm. to her. And that was it. Ten years that later, and it's still going strong. Nine, it was actually nine that we've been married. Oh, but yeah, but but we just we just uh, celebrated nine years two months ago. Well, last well, month. Congratulations, because marriage you. is not for you know this is not for the faint at heart. This you know, is not for wimps, wusses, and chumps. And sometimes <laughs> when you get into them, you realize you might be a wuss or a chump in that, and maybe that's not what you should have done. Well, you got to grow like, into you grow some. You know, I see it this way. When you get married, you have to grow into it. It's like it's like trying on a suit that's too big, mm -hmm. but it looks but it looks good on you, but it's a little bit too big for you. Mm -hmm. you, you. You got you got to grow into that thing, or go get it tailored. And I'm not trying to go get no suit tailored because that makes me think, okay, well something is wrong with it, and now I have to fix you. I am. Oh, oh, you better stop it. I, I'm going to you fix him. him. He's exactly. going to be wonderful after I fix him. This is a grown man, <laughs> and I'm going to come into his life, and I'm going to make it just so fabulous because I'm going to fix him and show him the errors of his ways and where he needs me to fix him. Well, that was my second marriage. I oh. thought she was going to fix me, and when I wouldn't be fixed, and she got mad at me for not being able to fix me, and I think that was... Oh, pretty, okay, that's, but, a over, that's a very general description of what happened, but that is pretty much what happened. 
And that that's you know that yeah. is, to me that is a setup for failure. You it cannot is. raise a grown person. No. All that they they didn't get when they were get, being reared. You're not gonna come in and fix it. That it, it, it just don't work like that. And yes. you do have to grow into it, and you have to have uh, enough, especially for longevity. You have to have enough wherewithal to understand and respect that things will change. Yes. You will change. You will grow. I mean, my I, my husband and I, if, you've been he not, if he were not my, we've been, we've been married 37, 38 years legally, oh. but we've been together 50. We oh. just celebrated our 50th year uh, on October the 8th last year. That's incredible. That's incredible. And, and, and you, and you know, and you, we go through ups and downs and turnarounds like everybody else. You know, I've been through hell and high water. You ever want to know where the phrase kick me to the curb came from? I did. <laughs> he kicked me to the curb in front of my sister's house. My nieces was out there. Why? Why? I'm going to get that to the curb. She slammed on the curb. I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> And my brother-in-law, he came out there and picked me up off and off the curb and, you know, clean my face up and blow my nose and everything and mm -hmm. kept on going. And we still going strong. You're going to go through, you will go through trials and tribulations. You will go through the fire. And it's what you're going to do when you get through the fire on the other side. That's and right. Growing from that. And no, not we, we're not having that kind of fire no more. Like, that's the last fire we're going to have. Like you said, the last thing I worked out was the thing I learned from that. And oftentimes people that, uh, one of my, I know you on here listening. I'm getting ready to talk about you because you know I love her. She been married. She don't live with no man unless she married to him. And she been married a bunch of times. And I, just, I just had to go back to calling her by her maiden name because I couldn't keep up with her. <laughs> and she, she be turning them out. I mean, she and they just love her to pieces. And I tell her, honey, you got a short attention man. Why you keep doing it? Because I ain't going to live with nobody like my husband. Like, but what if it only lasts for like a, a week? <laughs> <laughs> me up. And it is. This truly is an institution not to be entered into lightly. That's right. That's right. And you got and, 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 and institution that a lot of people want to get into, uh, but then they want to get out of it when they get into it. Because yeah. they see what it what it, I'm like this the one this the one to give me, Carl. I love you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Okay, now will you sign this prenuptial agreement? Just in <laughs> case this doesn't, you know, go all you know, like we want it, and then I'll get what so I told my husband, we must have been married about maybe 10, 15 years at that time. And I'm, you know, rock, we rocking and rolling, right? He'd been with me in the trenches. And I said, I think I need to get a prenuptial agreement with you. He was like, he was he was he didn't see y'all ain't right. <laughs> he was like, he was like, I ain't gonna get half, I'm gonna get all of it. I'm gonna bury you in the backyard in the pine box. I don't know why you tripping. I'm just saying, we 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 just just really being silly, but it's it's good to laugh. It's good to it you is. know to you know get it out. It's good to you know have you here with us. You know what's so what's coming up next for you? Because you always got something fabulous going on. Okay, now I know we're getting okay for those of you who might have tuned in like late and don't realize like I am a, like the family business like groupie of all of them. <laughs> I love all of them. I love that. I love, I love that. Women. I well, love everybody on there. Tell, tell well, the grips and gaffers I love them too. <laughs> well, I mean, I've got stuff all over the place. I just mm -hmm. told you that I finished season five of the family business. I don't know mm -hmm. when it's going to be released, but it will be released on BET Plus and maybe mm -hmm. after that onto Netflix. Mm -hmm. You can catch seasons one through four of that show on Netflix. Um, I saw Cynthia ask about my class. Um, you can go to my website, um, gilliardmedia.tv, gilliardmedia.tv, and there's a tab there for the class. You can contact me there. I don't have a virtual class. She's asking me that right now, but I do train privately, primarily mm -hmm. audition, uh, audition coaching. But I do I have a couple of clients who I work with ongoingly. Uh, online, but we have to determine mm -hmm. what the objectives are first before mm -hmm. we can move that in that direction. I, have, mm -hmm. I don't have an online class now, but that may be something that I do uh, in the future. 
have a movie called Silent Night in Algona. It's on pay-per-view right now. Um, Silent Night in Algona. It's a World War II movie about uh, prisoner training camps or prisoner camps uh, from World War II in Iowa. We, we brought German Nazi prisoners over here during World War II. It's a true story. I've never heard that before. I didn't know that either, like but it's a ever. true story. Yeah, it's a good film too. So it's on, um, I guess, all the platforms. You, you know, you can pay for it, mm -hmm. or whatever. Now tell um, us about Two Degrees that's oh, streaming on oh, Brick yeah. TV. Yes, yes. So Two Degrees is a comedy series that I created that is start the first season anyway is loosely based on that second marriage I told you about. So the first season is loosely based on me going through that divorce and how mm -hmm. how the world saw me and how I mm -hmm. acted during that time, which was outrageously silly and crazy. The show is a comedy, <laughs> but um, everybody in the show plays themselves. So I play myself. Mm -hmm. Everybody else play, in the show plays themselves with the exception of the lady who plays my divorced wife. She's played by the wonderful Shelly Robertson and the name of my wife in the show is LaDonna. Uh, so so it's the Tanya. <laughs> yeah, so two seasons of that show is on the Brick TV. You can get the Brick TV going to www.thebricktv.com. Um, it's a wonderful platform. If you like black movies, the Brick TV, our show is on there, but they got all these black movies on there that it, I know, watch it myself all the time. I watch the I, Brick TV myself. I, 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 again, I, I, it's, it's, I just kind of take an issue with black movies and us mm -hmm. calling them black movies. These are stories. These well, yeah, are, but what I, what I want to say, because we don't true. listen, because we don't call, we don't call a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio a white movie. No, let me you let know? me do it. I'm gonna you know you're white. It's, it's more of an identifier for, for mm -hmm. everybody. For example, you know, Uptown Saturday Night. Mm -hmm. You know, let's do it again. You know, uh, coming. They're just America. great movies. But they, they are great movies. But I want, but I want to see us. So uh, exactly. But but, but but what you're saying is true. But I want the people who are watching to know. That when you go on this platform, you're gonna see mm -hmm. stories like you're saying, Mother Love, that feature us. Mm -hmm. The hope, and it's all of these movies that you either haven't seen in a while or you missed, and it's a great platform for that. And it's five ninety nine a month. So, um, and that's Brick TV. Up, the the Brick TV. It's it's uh, it's a uh, an app. Like so, if you have a smart TV, you can download the app and you can join it, or you you join yeah. it on your phone, right? Mm -hmm. Get the app on your I phone and then transfer to your TV. I, I, you know, the, you just went way over my pay grade. I got to get the people come and turn the TV on for me because they say you got to have all four of the lights touch and you know, all the lights got to show up. Oh, and yeah. I can't turn the TV on. I can't turn it off. Then you got to have two, three remotes to try to work stuff to get to it. It's just, and I live with a gadget fanatic. Well, then fanatic. you cover. They, then you cover it then. It's, it, it's too, it's too, it's too big. <laughs> it's, it's just. It's too busy for me. It really is too busy. I mean, I'm a grown woman. I'm somebody's wife and grandmother. I can't turn the television on. My grandkids have to get me on the on the you know the thing. It's okay now, wait a minute. You, you, you know, don't sing that song. You don't know what they're saying. We just listen to the beat. Don't repeat the words. I, I know. I know you ain't supposed to repeat the word. I mean, I grew up in no town. We we knew all the words to all the songs, didn't we? Then you know all the words yeah, to all yeah, the songs. Yeah, you know, yeah. I you know, and I, I tell people that, and I, 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 I like some of the new artists. I really do. I think I would love Nicki Minaj if I knew what that child was saying. I don't know what that child was saying. It's out of my pay grade too, Mother Love. I don't. And, I don't, and, and they go too fast, and it's yes, too busy. You know, remember when the Temptations and the Four Tops, and you know, and the Miracles, they could get out there and they had a five thing microphone, and it's just them singing. In the now, you got to have fires, and you know, eleven thousand people. I don't know where my attention should go. I'm like, it's like. Gives me flashbacks to the days of college. You know, when you might go on a psychedelic trip. That's I'm like, this is just. It's too busy. It's too big. And it, you think about this, you know, and I, I know that you've been exposed to, you know, the hip hop culture. All of us have been. And, uh, you know, when we were growing up and you think about it, they're still playing our music. They sample all of our music. They, resample, of they sample everything. Exactly. They, they sample 
every and they'll tell you they'll tell you okay yeah we sampled that remember when we were growing up and you know you could hear the love song you could hear smoky robinson singing tears of a clown and that sound just as good when you were 16 as it did when you're 30 as it did when you're 45. what are these kids gonna be able to say to their children when they be listening to all these nasty vulgar lyrics that these kids is out here putting on like and what they say if they go on the internet you can't take it back can you imagine? I, 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 you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I, with all respect to that, I, I just, I, when I watch like the BET Awards or the Grammys mm -hmm. or, you know, the Soul Train Awards, I don't know anybody. I still listen to the same music, you know. Thank God for downloads, you know, with Apple Music and Spotify, because mm -hmm. I, I watch, <laughs> I listen to all the same music today that I listened to back in the seventies, pretty, pretty much, mm -hmm. you know, except for my orchestral music and my gospel music, mm -hmm. but pretty much. I'm still listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire, Temptation. I have a Motown playlist. I got an oldies playlist. You know, I've got Earth, Wind, and I said Earth, Wind, and Fire. You know, I listen to all the same music mm -hmm. that I listened to back then. I don't and have, not, I have very little of this new stuff on my on my playlist. Very little because I don't I, understand. I, I don't even know where to look for it. I don't even, see, and that's it. And I want to be in tune with them. We have grandchildren. We have nieces and nephews. And I don't want to be sitting on the sideline like, you know, so, well, I don't know what them children are saying. What they, what they want all that profane, profane thing. What y'all doing? Y'all need to shut up. Come sit down over here by Mother Love. What's wrong with y'all? I, 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 I want to know. And my, my our son, when he was a teenager, the, I, I can't even think of what the name of the song, but it it, it, it had a lyric in it. It said, "I got five on it, <laughs> let's go have fun." He said, "Mama, mama, mm -mm, mama." I was like, "What's the matter?" He said, "Mama, you can't, you can't, you can't be saying you can't that. that." I said, that "You play sing. it all the time, but you can't be saying <laughs> that." You know, they talk about five on it, mom. I was like, "No." He said, "That's why you can't sing it because you don't know what they saying, what they talking." So you better than me because I have no interest at all. Sometimes I, I'll, I'll have them, like, I do these Zooms with my two, two of my kids, uh, mm -hmm. Corinne and Colin, and they'll get into a talk between the two of them about, you know, music artists. I have no idea who they're talking what about. What they're talking about. You know, and then my daughter, my bonus daughter, uh, Jordan is a musician. In fact, my son is a musician, too. And mm -hmm. they have all these artists. There's some artists that they've introduced me to that I like. Like, there's a guy named Tom Mish. You ever heard of Tom Mish? M-I-S-C-H. Oh, my God. There's some soulful cats, and but see, Tom Mish, you can tell, is influenced by Stevie Wonder and by mm -hmm. these artists that we grew up on. Mm -hmm. You know, his music's incredible. People like that. Mm -hmm. You can find some people like that, but I'm talking about like the hardcore people you see on these music award shows. Mm -hmm. I have. You mentioned Nicki Minaj. I could not name a Nicki Minaj song if you had a knife to my neck. <laughs> I couldn't be either. I, I was trying to listen to her with, you know, with the kids in the car, right, you know, right, picking right. them up from school. And I was like, what is she saying? And then they just went right along with it. I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> right. it, it, it's, it's just too, this was the part that gets me and it shows you that it really isn't as big of a generation gap as people want to act like it is between uh, seasoned citizens, the generation behind us and their kids. It's not that big of a disconnect because we were in the car and the kids were all in elementary school and we're listening to Louis Armstrong, uh, What a Wonderful World. Mm -hmm. Now if that song is older than me and you and six people we it's know. Great song. Oh God. <laughs> it's yeah. All our ages up together. So it comes on and the kids are singing it and I'm singing it and it was like, well, well, how do you know that song? You know all the words to the song. I said, sweetie, that song is older than me and your papa and your other <laughs> grandmother and all your cousins. They was like, um, but that's Louis Armstrong. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Louis Armstrong. It is. And it was yeah. just so cool that they liked that song and they knew the words. And because they it's knew music. The and it's it's music and it's, it's ageless and it's music. It's that's why they sample. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, you know, you talked about, you know, you like your, uh, your pianist and your concertos. Do you have a classical artist that you are fond of that you could listen um, to? Um, there's a guy, what's well, a few people, but there's a guy named Ludovico Inaudi. He's an Italian uh, composer. He's a pianist and he, his music is beautiful. And Wait, then we see his a, name again. You made it sound um, so pretty. <laughs> Ludovico Inaudi. Lud and, Ludovico. Yeah. And then there is, uh, Helen Jane. What's her last name? Helen Jane. Well, oh, I'm drawing a blank, but she's all in my playlist. Mm -hmm. um, I like, and this—he's not really classical music, classical per se, 
But, you know, he's kind of done pop stuff, too. His name is uh, David Foster. You know mm-hmm. who David Foster is? Oh, who doesn't know David Foster? Okay, so, yeah, yeah, oh, right, right, right. But David Foster does, like, these um, orchestral releases with just piano and strings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He's got a song called Everlasting. David Foster, Everlasting. I love that. I play it oh, all the time, God. over and over again. <laughs> is it that, is, and being in the industry, uh, who entertains you in the industry? Who are the actors and actresses? Okay, not the ones that's, that's on the family business because I love you. No, the outside, no, outside of there. There's so many. There's, there's so many. And, uh, there's so many. Some, 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 of, some of my actor friends, they tease me. They call me the populist because I like what everybody else likes. You know, you know, sometimes actors like, you know, they have to be high and haughty. It's got to be the deep movie and the deep of the deep movie. <laughs> no, I like to go to movies and forget what I saw when I leave. When we laugh my butt off and enjoying it when I'm in the theater. Mm-hmm. So I love who everybody else loves. I love Denzel Washington. I love Kevin Hart. I love um, uh, Meryl Streep. I love Viola Davis. <sighs> I love, you know, I love so many people entertain me. You know, I'm drawing a blank now. I know I'm missing somebody. There's a lot of people who entertain mm-hmm. me. Sam Jackson, who I actually did a film with. Did you Sam. really? Yeah, I did. I did. I was in Coach Carter. I worked with Sam Jackson. So, I mean, I worked now, with see, a lot Now you're going to make me go watch Coach Carter again. <laughs> I work with a lot of great people. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, it's, there's a lot of Eddie Murphy to me who mm-hmm. is the GOAT. So- he is so funny. I was watching Coming to America 2 just two nights ago. Not the whole movie. Speaking of which, Wesley Snipes. I love I Wesley Snipes. Him too. He love gave Wesley. me the biggest hug. He's and a nice guy, too. I've met him a couple is, times. He nice is guy. just the nicest guy. Mm-hmm. He, uh, mm-hmm. we, we were going into, uh, he was going to see his manager, and I was going to see my manager, and we, they happened to be in the same building at the time. And mm-hmm. so I, I'm getting out of the car, and he's behind me. And he gets out the car, and I'm like, oh, no, uh-uh. He ain't walking past me. Mm-mm. And I got uh-huh. water coming, uh-huh. and I smell like 100 million bucks. I look like a big burst of sunshine. This is before I lost weight. And and I come up to him and say, hi, Wesley. I'm Mother Love. And he went, Mother Love. I said, yeah, mother love. And I said, come here, baby. Let me just, come on, come on here. Just let me hug you. I, I just need to do this for all the women who are never, ever, ever going to get this close to you. And he was like, yeah. And he was hugging me, I guess, just a little too tight because my husband came out like, uh, and Wesley Snipes let go of me so fast, I almost hit the curb. <laughs> he was like, man, I was just, she was, he said, I know. Okay, that's enough. And Wesley went right away. I was like, dude, that was Wesley Snipes. And I could care and I care about that. Why? He I was like, I, you know, but kind of in the way it's kind of it's kind of still cute that he still, you know, gets a little you, do, like, you, do, you know love the, do you know what I love the most about Wesley Snipes watching Wesley Snipes? I'm gonna tell you what it is. Okay. Um Wesley Snipes, and I don't want to get into too much hyperbole, because then I'll be, I think of somebody else. <laughs> but Wesley Snipes is to me one of the best physical actors I've ever seen. Meaning that his whole body, the way he moves and, you know, how he uses his entire, he's head to toe. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like watching about Wesley. He's head to toe. Every movie he plays, he plays his whole body to the end. He goes all the way. Yes, he does. And 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 that's what I like about him. If, if 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 you look at, you know, Coming to America, you see a lot of that in that movie. Mm-hmm. It's simple stuff. You, it is very funny you. too. He, very let funny. me ask you this: this is this has been an issue uh, that is has come to the fore to the forefront again about uh, our black uh, actors, our male actors, who are willing to dress as women, mm-hmm. uh, and and. You know, because they, that's what they do. That, that's what the role recalls. Do you have, do, what is your um, feeling about them uh, being able, you know, to do that? And would you ever would put on a dress? No, I wouldn't. Um, that was easy. Um, uh, how do I say this? I mean, uh, I, I mean, I've heard of these stories about, you know, you've got to put on a dress before you go to the next level. I, I don't know. Maybe. But you know what came to my mind, Mother Love, when it just mm-hmm. came up recently? I was remembering the old Bardfield days and people like, like Milton Berle. 
and um, others like who wore dresses mm -hmm. too, especially in the vein of comedy. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how seriously to take that. I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, but I wouldn't do it. But I'm, you know, I don't think that I would do it. Work. I'd put on a dress for a while. <laughs> I mean, you know, sure I would. Uh, and, and, you it, know, it, uh, listen, it I, is wonderful I, to I, talk I, to I, you I, again. You know, I, Let I us don't have to. tell people how they can get in touch with you and and, and, and tell them just we got like three seconds. Tell them where, how they can oh, get in touch Lord. with you. On Facebook, Carl Gilliard. See, like you see it going across the screen C A R L G I L L I A R D. Instagram, the same thing, Carl Gilliard. The series two degrees, spell it out, T-W-O degrees, the series. You can get that on Facebook and get it on Instagram. See some excerpts from the show. Go to the Brick TV. See the whole series, 12 episodes. I went, My and name. I say, and I and X, Twitter X, same thing, okay. Carl Gilliard. I want to thank you for sharing yourself with us. Thank you, Cynthia Busby. And babies, no, you can follow Mother Love on social media. You can watch me, follow me on Facebook at the Mother Love Show, X at Mother Love Show. Uh, uh, YouTube at Mother Love Show, TikTok at The Mother Love Show, Instagram at Mother Love Show, and in the LinkedIn at The Mother Love Show. Thank you all so much. Know that I 